Yeah, Goku, you done goofed. That's right everyone, Dragon Ball Super Episode 78 just landed and the savior has come back once again! The gods of every universe in shock. Losers are raced in the tournament of power. Dragon Ball Super! Turn your tournament into a death tournament! Ultimate non sequitur! Where we last left off, the Daishin Khan was describing the tournament of power and where it will take place. Where will it take place? Why? In the world of Void. Void just happens, really. As implied, it hosts literally nothing except clouds. Dark, angry clouds. So that's something. The time chamber had less than that. The best fighter in the tournament gets, much like in the Universe 6 tournament, a wish from the Super Dragon Balls, brought to you courtesy mostly by Champa. Judging from his cameo appearance, he was probably going to get a wish for himself again. As for the winning universe, they get nothing. Yeah, nothing. Everyone else? They die. As does their universes. Yeah, not exactly news to us, but it's news to the characters. Congratulations, Goku. You've just potentially doomed 92% of existence. Have fun with that. Goku, you get a gold star. Made from the ashes of the other 11 universes which are now dead! Since the future Omni King hasn't seen a fight like the present Omni King has, there is going to be an exhibition match between Universe 7 and Universe 9. They have to choose three fighters to compete within the next hour. No pressure then. Needless to say, Beerus, Supreme Kai and Whis are all really angry or at least annoyed with Goku right now. Beerus because the universe is going to be destroyed potentially, as well as his brother may be killed. The Supreme Kai will be filled with so much shame that he won't be able to look at creation ever again. And Whis is probably affected most of all because all his other siblings would die. I mean, angels might not show emotions like we do, even though he does show joy and annoyment at food. But it's worth pointing out nonetheless. All three of them gang up on Goku and utter the word that fills Goku with dread. RESPONSIBILITY! <gasps> of course, Goku being Goku, he brushes this aside and then decides to go after three fighters in Universe 7. No help from Beerus or Whis, He's got to go and do this on his own. Perhaps this might explain why the Universe 7 team is mainly made up of major characters from Dragon Ball. Okay, that makes a bit of sense. Goku's on the case and he goes to Vegeta asking for his assistance in this exhibition match. He once again declines because he wants to be with Bulma when she gives birth to Brock. Vegeta must be feeling really small right now because his head looks it right here. Okay, uh, Goten and Trunks? Nah, too young. <gasps> Son? <gasps> Gohan! Yes! He's reluctant though, so Goku chooses to manipulate him by uttering the whole universe as being a race thing to Gohan, just trying to make him feel guilty, and it kind of works. Well, Goku, you're being kind of a dick right now. Gohan's way more level-headed though, and actually begs to Goku to keep this a secret from everyone else. And actually, Goku somewhat listens to him, albeit reluctantly. But thanks to a side serving of coaxing from Videl, Gohan actually decides to go with Goku to fight in this exhibition match. It's important to remember that as of now, in the Universe 7 team, only Goku and Gohan know about the whole universe is being destroyed thing. I can't imagine the rest of the team would take it that well. Especially Krillin, he'd be quaking in his boots. As would pretty much everyone else because they would all die. Yeah. You wouldn't exactly want that thing hanging over one else's head when they're fighting, would you? So we have Gohan. Then a wild boo approaches. He agrees too, thanks to some persuasion from Mr. Satan. <gasps> Does this mean we get to see more Mr. Satan? Yay! Hail Satan! So we cut to the sacred world of the Kais and Gohan's there just dressed in his outfit from the Boo Saga, only with glasses. There's no build up or anything. No cute scene with Videl and Pan wishing him luck or him digging out his gi in some kind of flashback thing. No, we're just gonna jump straight into this. Okay. No cute romantic scene with Videl and Pan as he headed off. No? Well, I guess the show is mainly for young Japanese boys, so... Oh, oh well. Our posse arrives at the Omni King's digs and they meet the combatants of Universe 9, as well as its God of Destruction, its Supreme Kai, and its Angel. But then we get to meet all the other Gods of Destruction, Supreme Kai's and Angels, because the Daishinkan, without further ado, creates an arena and spectator areas for everyone 
to see and use. Oh hey, we get to see Goasu too. Hey Goasu. Seems not quite the same because he doesn't get to say Samus anymore. Yeah, you know that big buff alien dude in the Dragon Ball Super opening and in the previews you could see him in one of the plinths? He wasn't really covered up that much. He's somehow been able to materialize more clothing thanks to the animation department. Good spot, Misty BZ babe. Thank you. Once again, our Lord and Savior, Mr. Satan, is there to keep Goku in check. He knows where it's at. What in the... Is that meant to be a tiki head or something? Or Vivian from the Young Ones 30 years later? Wow, Tails grew up to look really cool. Supreme Kai with glasses? Mm, okay. At least the characters look somewhat different, I guess. We don't really have the diversity, though, of the South Supreme Kai, the East Supreme Kai, the West Supreme Kai, the North Supreme Kai of Universe 7, but... Alright. Once again, Goku disrespects the gods and flies up to the Omni King and says, Hey, what's up? How you doing, buddy? Before getting slammed back by Beerus. Because of this transgression, all the other universes now consider Universe 7 to be a bunch of impudent no-hopers who know nothing about respect. Good job there, Goku. You just tarred your universe with the same brush as you did with everyone else that you don't respect. Good job. I don't know what I'm doing with my hands. I'm just showing displeasure at what Goku's doing right now. Now take responsibility and start fighting already. Or pick someone else to do it. Most likely Boo. Actually, Boo is in the first fight. He is fighting against Basil. I will save myself. No, can't. Do resist. Go on. There it is! But much like in the Shampoo arc, Boo is fast asleep and not able to do anything. But this time, they have Mr. Satan to help. And thanks to our savior and some super chocolate, Boo is awake and jumps down to actually do something. Thank you! Finally, we get to see Boo take a punch. Or kicks. Because that's what Basil does. He is Basil the kicker. Well, it makes sense because Basil sure has a kick to it. Boo is just bouncing around doing nothing, but then he gives a wry smile because that's just going to show that he's probably going to win. But we have to wait until the next episode to find out. All in all, this episode was okay. It actually establishes that this arc is going to be at a slower pace than the Shampoo arc and the Goku Black arc. So hopefully we should get a bit more traction here and a bit more lore building, which is what this episode does quite well. We get to see all the other Gods of Destruction, Angels, and Supreme Kai, so it's all been opened up. We now know that these universes exist, and they have a similar structure to ours. And instead of going into the main tournament and the preparations for that, we're actually getting a bit of a taster session right now, just to kind of give everyone an idea about what we can expect. And you know what? That's actually really good of Toei. It, it actually prepares us for something instead of just diving in, like some of the other arcs. And they picked a universe we haven't seen before. That's good. They could have just used Universe 6 and have some Beerus Shamba banter going on here, but they resisted it. We actually got a different universe. Nice. This should take up maybe about three, four episodes perhaps? I'm guessing it's going to be a longer arc since we got a dedicated opening for it and all. As for the rest of the episode, it was quite entertaining and we did get the lore building as I mentioned but it really does throw Goku's status as a hero into doubt. In any case, he is certainly veering towards chaotic good, perhaps chaotic neutral. What more can we expect? Well, let's tune in next week and find out. But anyway, that's my review of Dragon Ball Super Episode 78. Tune in next time for my review of Episode 79. Until the next one, be sure to like and subscribe. And until then, catch you later.